Okay, let's talk about uh, definite integrals. We've already looked at indefinite integrals where we don't have limits. So, in a case where you have limits, those are called definite integrals. So, for example, if you've got a b and a an a down there of a certain function in respect to x, this is called a definite integral. So, b is called the upper limit, a is called the lower limit. So you understand basically this will simplify to something where the integral is inside the brackets and then the upper limit becomes b and then a so what will happen is taking the integral of f of x to be let's say capital f of x that would mean that at every point where you've got x after the integral after the integrating you're going to have f of b which is the upper limit minus f of a where the function capital F represents the integral. So let's just go into it. Consider a case where they want us to <coughs> to look at a case where we have 4 and 1 as the limits and then x squared. So the first thing that you'd want to do is first of all to determine the of course this is in respect to x. The first thing that you want to do is basically get to determine the integral. So the integral is going to be so you increase the power by 1, so it will be the power 3 divided by that, and then of course we will just add a constant c. Okay. So don't forget the limits, the limits we have got a 4 and a 1. So now what happens for you to evaluate that is, at every point where you have x, substitute the limits. So we start with the upper limit, so if you substitute uh, a 4 there, you're going to have 4 to the power 3, over 3 plus c in brackets minus the lower limit where we have 1 so put the 1 where is x over 3 plus c so you will notice that of course c is common and it will subtract so 4 to the power 3 that is 4 times 4 16 times 4 64 so I have 64 over 3 the c's will subtract and then one the power 3 is just a 1 over 3, which of course will reduce to 63. Uh, am I right? 63 and then over 3. So 3 into 6 is 2 and then 1. So 21. So this applies the limits may be negatives, they may be positives, all the same. So for one practice, try out this one. Pause the video and just try it out. So that's, you know, <coughs> the integral is going to be what? If you integrate x to the power 3, you're going to have x to the power 4 divided by 4. Now, at this point, you know you know that it's not necessary for us to add the c, but because it will always be subtracting. So we have 3 and then negative 2 as our limits. So for the first part, use the upper limit, which is 3. Now raise the power 4 over 4, and then minus... Now we'll put the lower limit, which is now negative 2, the power 4 over 4. Okay, as simple as that is. So if you try to simplify that, what you get is the answer. So limits may also be, may also apply to, we looked at the trigonometric functions, right? So you may have it in terms of angles, like that, where you have got cosine of x dx. How do you approach such a one? So in such a case, of course, we'll still do the same. Just perform the normal way. What's the integral of cosine? So the integral of cosine is reversing what was integrated, what was differentiated. So we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. So obviously, in this case, the answer is sine. So you're going to have sine of x. Of course, we know you divide by the derivative of what is in the brackets. The derivative of x is just the one. So in this case, nothing changes, and then we have upper limit to be pi over 2, and then 0. So we are going to have the first upper limit, which is sine pi over 2, and then minus sine of the lower limit. Now, sine pi over 2 is the same as sine 90, which is the 1. Sine 0 is 0 because the graph starts, I believe, you are conversant with trigonometry, so at 0 there, and then this is pi over 2, and that, that's the 1, negative 1. So the answer is just the one. So 
for your own practice um, try to attempt to look at uh, these few questions try to determine the, the definite integral when you have 1 and 0 for e to the power 2x and then you can also attempt to try out the definite integral when you have 1 negative 1 and then 5x to the power 3 dx all these are in respect to x so feel free to pause the video before you basically get to see the results or the solutions okay so you can also attempt to try out the uh, way of pi over 2 and then a 0 now in terms of in terms of sign okay so the results that you need to expect after you've done all your calculations as follows so you need to have a 1 there then for the other one 5x to the power 3 you need to have a 0 and then the other one hit the power 2x you need to have e to the power 2 over 2 minus half okay so hopefully you're able to determine that so now let's proceed and look at the application of definite integrals so in terms of where you've got a graph how do you find the area and the curve and then look at the volume as well